Beauty is everywhere in the Hawaiian Islands. But two islands, Maui, the Valley Isle, and Kauai, the Garden Isle, might have a slight edge. Which is best for you? Both are. But if you have to choose, hopefully my experiences can help. Let's start with Maui. I've had conventional and unconventional trips to this island. I've driven the must-see Hana Highway and the heart-stopping Kanakili Highway. I've stayed in a condo on Ma'alaya Bay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And on a catamaran moored in it, reachable only by kayak. There's so much to do here. However you see Maui, it will be a beautiful thrill ride. First, a little geography. By land size, Maui is the second largest Hawaiian island. It's 48 miles across. You'll land at the Kahului Airport in the island's largest city, around 30,000 people, home to Target and Costco, and other things you might need. Lahaina, on Maui's west coast, its leeward side, is where charm went to live. Historic beautiful Lahaina was destroyed by a wildfire in August 2023 that claimed more than 100 lives and left thousands homeless. Support a charity working to help, and when it feels right, visit Maui and support the island's tourism-based economy. Maui is loaded with massive resorts, but if you're like me, and that's not your thing, there are plenty of smaller places and oceanfront condos to choose from. Kihei in South Maui, has lots of hotels and rental options along beautiful Sugar Beach. This area was the landing point for my kayak from the catamaran I was lucky enough to stay on several years ago. It's not an option now, but the experience was so wonderful that boat stays on Airbnb are my first search criteria anywhere in the world. The Maalaya Bay condo I stayed in is near the aquarium, the Coast Guard station, and lots of sailing, snorkeling, and biking outfitters. Rental units in this area are well positioned for easy access to all parts of the island, but the beach here is a bit less accessible. Since we're here now, let's book a Molokini Crater snorkeling tour and head out to find Nemo in one of the most spectacular settings imaginable. Inside the submerged volcanic caldera are hundreds of species of fish. The above water crescent wall protects snorkelers and scuba and snuba divers from waves. There are lots of tour options, so take a good look around and find some that work for you. The crater is just offshore from Big Beach and Little Beach. The names are appropriately descriptive. Big Beach is a wide, expansive beach for anywhere, but especially on Maui. The sand is soft, but the shore break is very strong. There are lifeguards on the beach, but its powerful waves make swimming unwise for all but the strongest swimmers. Parking for both beaches can be problematic. If you can, get here early or later in the day when the crowd thins out. And if you're lucky, there'll be a food truck in the lot. Few things are better than a truck full of food at a beach. It's time for the road to Hana, the Hana Highway, Maui's most popular tourist attraction. The journey to the namesake town is a mere 52 miles. If you make no stops along the way, it will take you two and a half hours to drive this narrow mountain road through a lush tropical rainforest. You'll pass over 46 one-lane bridges and twist around 620 curves. As a driver, I was fine. As a passenger, I wouldn't have been. If you get car sick, take something from motion sickness. So how do you get there? From Kahului, you hit Highway 36, which becomes Highway 360. Along the way, there are plenty of reasons to stop. Waterfalls, botanical gardens, and other attractions. Get a detailed guide and plan to spend an entire day exploring as you go. If you can, stay overnight in Hana and avoid a drive back in the dark. The return trip, backtracking to Kapalui via the Hana Highway, gives you a chance to see the sights you passed up on the way in. There's another route back, but rental car companies discourage its use. The scary part of this southwestern road is just past Kipahulu, where the roadway hugs cliff walls held in place by wire and netting. You'll definitely question your good decision-making ability here. If you go this route, 
take it slow and watch out for others. I had a car, but it wasn't raining or muddy. A 4x4 might be a safer bet. As you make your way along State Road 31, it straightens out. You won't have traffic to deal with. This is an isolated place. If you want a bit of solitude on Maui, you'll find it here. You can also circle the West Maui Mountains on the island's other side, but I wouldn't recommend it. Out of an abundance of ignorance, I found myself on the Kanakili Highway on the North Shore. But highway isn't the right word. It's more like mountain-hugging golf cart path with narrow, one-way snaking turns right next to sheer cliffs. It's a frightening drive that becomes absolutely horrifying when you encounter an oncoming car and have to back up until you find a pullout that allows both to pass. As I later found out, it's a legendarily dangerous road, one of the most treacherous in the world. It's 21 miles, but your speedometer won't often get above five. Ho'okipa Beach Park on Maui's North Shore offers so much. If you're a pro windsurfer, it's a well-known destination, the site of premier windsurfing competitions. Consistent winds, powerful waves, dangerous rip currents, and a shallow reef make it off limits to all but experienced surfers. This beautiful beach has lifeguards, covered pavilions with picnic tables and grills, restrooms, freshwater showers, and above all, a lookout to catch the action. And green sea turtles often visit too. Lifeguards say 2 to 4 p.m. is the best time to see them. On this side of the island is North Shore Zipline Company. I had a great time there. Can you tell? Beginners or experienced zipliners will too. It's located at Camp Maui, a World War II training camp. There's a museum there that tells that story. There are lots of places to zip line on Maui. Yeah. And I'm sure they're just as much fun. Woo! You can spot whales from any of the islands, but the warm waters in the channel between Maui, Molokai, and Lanai make it one of the best whale watching destinations in the world. Whale watching season is November to May, with peak season usually January to March. Sunrise at Haleakala's 10,000 foot peak is not to be missed, and despite the early call, it's the popular thing to do at this national park. So much so that separate car reservations are required for park entry between 3 and 7 a.m. You'll also need a regular park pass. You can get both at recreation.gov. Sunsets in Haleakala aren't bad either. Haleakala means house of the sun. Before we move on to Kauai, there's an island I haven't mentioned that you can also see, Molokai, the fifth most populated of Hawaii's eight major islands and Maui's nearby neighbor. It's hard to get around on mountain-filled Molokai and it's not set up for tourism, but it's 3,000 foot sea cliffs, the tallest in the world, are a spectacular sight to see. The cost of a relatively short helicopter tour of the island is pretty spectacular too, but I'm glad I did it. Flying by these massive towering cliffs is one of my most vivid, lasting memories of all the Hawaiian Islands. They are almost otherworldly in their beauty. Helicopter tours are available from the Kapalui Airport. Am I saving the best for last? You be the judge. Let's get to Kauai, the Garden Isle. It's called that because a tropical rainforest covers much of this fourth largest of the Hawaiian Islands. A bit more than 70,000 people call it home. And once you visit, you'll realize how fortunate they are. First, a little geography. You'll arrive at the airport at Lihue. From there, it's a short drive to Kapa'a. Centered between the north and south coast, it's often my Kauai home base. This east side of the island, known as the Coconut Coast, is a great place to catch sunrises. And thanks to an abundance of roosters, you won't miss one of them. The North Shore has the Kilauea Lighthouse, Princeville, and a lifetime supply of beautiful beaches. On the south shore is the postcard-perfect Old Kaloa Town, food trucks galore, the eucalyptus tree tunnel, Port Allen, where you'll board boats cruising the Nepali coast, surfer-friendly beaches, perfect for sunsets, and Waimea Canyon. The northwest side of the island is home to the skyscraping sea cliffs of the Nepali coast. Your car can't make it there, but a coastal cruise sure can. 
There are lots of places to stay on Kauai. Hotels, large resorts, and rentals. By now you know I like a good Airbnb. A beachfront poolside condo at Aston Islander on the beach in Kapa'a fits me just fine. And it's just feet away from the Lava Lava Beach Club. It's the kind of restaurant you'd think you'd find on islands around the world. But you don't. Great food, live music, a warm welcoming atmosphere, and as beachside as you can get. If I stay somewhere else on the island, chances are I'll end up here for supper regardless. You can't come to Kauai and not see the Nepali coast. There are lots of options. Most cruises depart from Port Allen on the south shore. I had an early morning call for my five-hour Holo Holo Nepali coast snorkel and sailing tour. After a captain's briefing, we walked to the dock to board Layla, a 50-foot Kauai-made catamaran. First up, we snorkel at a coral reef not far from the dock. The company provides equipment and the crew outfits passengers. With little wind and calm seas, the sails stay down as we power up the Nepali coast. Making good time, we reach the end of the sea cliffs before turning back. Time for lunch, sandwiches, veggies, a bit of pasta, and drinks of your choice. As we make our way back down the coast, our focus turns to whales. And on this near perfect day, we spot a mother and calf in the distance, and then more whales. They give us a show. I popped a few Dramamine the night before and the morning of this ocean outing. A few people spent their day leaning over the back of the boat. Don't risk motion sickness on your Hawaiian vacation. This is a wonderful way to spend the first half of a Kauai day. The catamaran was sleek and fast. The crew informative and fun. The arrival directions clear. Just an all around great time. As you leave Port Allen, drive through the eucalyptus tree tunnel and grab a bite at one of the two food truck villages in charming, historic Old Kaloa Town. To visit Waimea Canyon, you don't pass through or pay an entrance fee at a ranger station. Instead, when you park in the canyon lookout lot, you buy a ticket from a machine. Put the receipt in the car window and you're good to go. The lookout has an expansive two-level deck that allows you to take in the 10-mile long, 3,000-foot deep, vibrantly colored gorge. Waimea Canyon was formed by the Waimea River as it carried rainfall from Mount Waialiali, one of the wettest places on Earth. You can spend a lot of time here hiking and exploring the canyon. Not far from the canyon is the Martian-like beauty of Red Dirt Falls. It's an oddly peaceful place with no little green men in sight. Not far from there, something as simple as tall grass in the afternoon sun becomes a top roadside attraction. Look around. It's Kauai. Even ordinary things are beautiful. Be sure to see at least one South Shore sunset. Hikaha Beach Park, a wide treeless beach, is the perfect place to do that. When surf is up and surfers are out, the pre-sunset show is spectacular, too. Next up, the Kilauea Lighthouse at Kilauea Point National Wildlife Refuge. Lighthouse and refuge tours may be suspended or limited, so check their websites as you plan your trip. But open or not, take the short drive from the highway to the viewpoint. It is a beautiful sight. From high above, you see the waves crashing onto the rocks below. As you look toward the lighthouse, perched atop the point since 1913, see if you can spot a red-footed booby, an albatross, a Hawaiian monk seal, a green sea turtle, or a humpback whale. You might also spot a nene, known as the Hawaiian goose. It's the state bird. Seeing a flock of them has got to bring you good luck. As you head back out on the highway, stop at Kilauea's community park. The aloha sign, shaped out of shrubs, is certainly selfie worthy. 
As you head to larger beaches along the North Shore, check out some of the smaller ones. As a Gulf Coast Southerner, shade trees on beaches fill me with envy. And Kauai has more than its share. Nearby the North Shore town of Princeville, you'll pass two Hanalei lookouts. At the Valley Lookout, you'll see how fertile soil is formed. And at the Bay Lookout, you'll have a great view of the mountains, valley, and in the distance, the bay. As you explore, you'll drive over the Hanalei Bridge to the Hanalei Bay, taking in the view at Hanalei Beach. It's the largest bay on the North Shore, with two miles of beach. Its now 340-foot-long pier was originally built in 1892 to help farmers move crops to market. In summer, sailboats moor in its warm waters. In winter, large waves bring surfers. As you make your way westward, stop at Wainiha Bay Park, a thin stretch of rocky beach with great views. The North Shore gets about 85 inches of rain yearly, making it very lush. The winter months, especially February, aren't too friendly to swimmers or boaters, but summer months are a different story. You can spend days exploring Kauai's North Shore, but if you just have one day, you can see a lot. There are plenty of beaches to see on the North Shore. None will disappoint. Make your way to Haina Beach Park. It's a large beach watched over by lifeguards with lava rocks to climb in front of lush mountains. Right across the highway is the massive, though easy to miss, the Manini Holo Dry Cave. With a sandy floor and high ceiling that tapers down, this cavernous arena could host one of Kauai's larger luau's. At 300 feet deep, it's a don't miss. It's also a thing of legend. Pick yours, a secret escape route from the South Shore or home to a fish-stealing evil spirit. Further down the coast are Haina State Park and Nepali Coast State Wilderness Park. Great for hiking and camping. Check permit requirements on their websites. Kealia Beach on the east side's Coconut Coast is a large beach with strong surf and even stronger surfers. The Waialua River kayak and waterfall hike is a fantastic way to spend five hours on Kauai's east side. Lots of outfitters offer this adventure. I went with Rainbow Kayak Tours and I had a fantastic time. A great paddle, yes. A beautiful hike, yes. Spectacular scenery, yes. It was an outstanding experience anyway. thanks to Zach, and our guide. Obviously the beginning of Solo travel has benefits. The king of the wild look. <laughs> Case in point, you almost always get paired with the guide. This time, even paddling wasn't required. The ultimate tour. I do nothing, I do nothing. <laughs> the Waialua River, is on the east side of the island between Kapa'a and Lahue. To get to and from Secret Falls requires several miles of paddling and a one mile hike. You'll cross the river on foot, hike through the tall elephant grass, walk riverside on a boardwalk, and cross a couple of small falls. And then you'll see 120 foot tall Secret Falls. A quick lunch, and then the king of the Waialua makes his way behind the falls. Something brave or more likely foolish people do sometimes. The water is beyond cold and it's hard to breathe when you're behind the falls, but it's the least a king can do for his subjects. We cast away with Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. On our Same return stuff, trip, our guide Zach together. filled it with insight and, and more than a few dad jokes. About... Be sure to see the free shows at Coconut Marketplace in Kapa'a. This centrally located center has shops and restaurants a supermarket-style ABC store, and a fantastic shave ice place. And what's Hawaii without an Elvis tune? There's so much to see and do on Kauai and Maui, just as there is on all the other islands. What I've shown you are my experiences, my Hawaii. Yours will be different. But I hope I've given you a better idea of where you can go and what you can do in this spectacular Pacific paradise. Apologies for any mispronounced Hawaiian words. It's a beautiful language. I wish I spoke it better. I love Hawaii, the islands, and its people. And I hope this was apparent as you watched. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel, Newsocracy. I'm Jim Albritton.
Thanks for watching.